Good day to everyone. My name is Elisha A. Gabriel, one of the presenters of Group 4. Today, we are tackling our module in Week 4 entitled AC or DC Current. Are you ready to learn? We are ready to learn! We all know that AC is alternating current that comes from the power station into the power outlets. And DC, or direct current, comes from the multiple sources. What are these? These are the cells or the batteries. So we are here to identify some of the devices in our homes and classify them into AC or DC current. Are you ready? Yes, we are ready! AC or alternating current, we have here washing machine, refrigerator, air condition, blender, and flat iron. Next, we have here DC or direct current that uses cells or batteries. We have here flashlights, cell phones, laptop and remote, lamp sheets. AC and DC is very important in our lives as we have here in a civilized community. Why? Because when when the typhoon struck our province or our, in a community, we have alternating sources that can be used as the current. We have the batteries and cells. That's why they are very important. If we have no power station or no current power station in a power station because of the because of brownout or blackout, the Batteries and cells were useful in our lives to provide electricity, just like emergency light, um, remote, uh, emergency light, emergency love shades, or anything that can be used for our safety. That's all. Thank you. So for the guide question number one of activity number two, why did the coil or the armature coil did not continuously rotate on the procedure number one? Aside from the current on the coil, what else is needed to enable the coil to rotate continuously? When a current flows through the armature coil, forces occur in it as a result of the current carrying conductors being in the permanent magnet's magnetic field, causing the armature coil to rotate. The north pole on the left is drawn to the south pole on the right. As a result, the coil stop rotates left and the coil's bottom, which is south pole, is attracted to the magnet on the right. Because the coil's electromagnet is aligned with the permanent magnets, there is no turning force once it reaches the upright position. The coil would stop at this position if the current in the coil was constant. So the current stops for an instant. The commutator, however, breaks the contact in this position to maintain its spinning. The coil's velocity propels it forward and the contacts are rejoined. They are now, however, the opposite way around. So the side of the coil that used to be south pole is now the north pole. Every half turn or every time the coil is in upright position, the commutator will change the contacts. The motor will continue to rotate in this manner. So, for the guide question number two, we have the question of compare the direction of the coil's rotation in procedures 6 and 7, what makes a difference in the coil's rotation in every situation? So, for the answer for that, if you decide to reverse the motor's rotation by reversing the armature current in a DC motor or swapping the two pieces for an AC motor, the induced voltage now aids the current flow of a, instead of opposing it. It will, result, it will result of a big current surge. So for the question number 3 in activity 2, what is the function of an electric motor and what form of energy does it use and produce? We all know that an electric motor is also considered as a generator. The function of an electric motor, um, it converts electrical energy into a mechanical energy. Most electric motors operate through the interaction between the motor's magnetic field and electric current in a wire. It produces force in the form of torque applied on a motor shaft. Lastly, for question number 4, what have you learned and realized about the activity? As we performed the experiment in the activity we've conducted, we realized that the ACTC is a power. AC means alternating current power. It's a standard electricity. 
that comes out of power outlet and is defined as a flow of change that exhibit as a periodic change in directions. AC current flow changes between positive and negative because of electrons electrical current come from the flow of electrons which can move in either positive for upward or negative for downward direction while for DC means direct current power as you may says from the mean is a linear electrical current it moves in a straight line Moreover, direct current come from multiple sources including batteries, solar cells, fuel cells, and some modify alternating. DC power can also be made from AC power by using rectifier that converts AC to DC. Upon knowing this, we realize that although many of today's electronics and electrical devices prefer DC power because of its smooth flow and even voltage, we could not get by without AC. Both types of power are essential, so one is better than the other. So we are now down to the last activity and we were tasked to answer seven guide questions. So for the first one, based from the devices you have given in activity number one, what do we think is the source of power of each device and why? So I think the source of power of each device came from the DC or direct current and the AC alternating current um, source of power. So if we uh, look into the, its deeper content, uh, for the AC power source, it came from the outlet or the um, electric company that uh, pulsates electric current throughout the system. And for the DC, it came from the um, battery because uh, our devices um, involves um, flashlight and more. So to ask why do I think that is the source of power, it is because they involve uh, power, uh, potential difference or the voltage that also produce current. And with that current, those electrons are traveling throughout the system. And with the, and the, and those electrons ones, they give electricity to the devices. That's all. First, can use directly to our home appliances. Why or why not? The answer is no. Since the voltage is high during electricity transmissions, it needs to undergo voltage reduction through transformers in order to have a safe use of power at home. So, moving on to the third question, we propose the concept of supplying electrical energy using alternating current. No other one but the only most famous invention of Nikola Tesla, 1856-1943, a Serbian-American inventor, electrical engineer, and a mechanical engineer who designed the alternating current or AC system. He was also known for his Tesla coil invention, which is used for radio technology and wireless transmission. So, for the guide question number four, we have the question, What is needed so that we can use the AC power source in appliances that only requires low AC power? To answer that, we'll need a Variac style auto transformer linked to the main of a 120 volts to 24 volts transformer. By Faraday's law, every transformer operates on the concept of induction which is only feasible with an AC supply. So moving on to the fifth question, how can you compare alternating current or AC and direct current or DC? In just a brief summary of history of these two, on year 1856 to 1943, Nikola Tesla is the one who invented the alternating current. On the, on the other hand, Edison is the one who invented the direct current. So, electricity is an electric current or power that flows through a circuit in two different forms. That's what we call the alternating current and direct current. So, how do we confer these two? Um, basically, these two are both required for proper operation of our household appliances and technological equipment. First, a direct current or DC is 
often used in battery-powered applications. Everything that operates on the battery is what we call the direct current. We have that, the flashlight, cell phones, mobile phones, um, anything that applies battery. On the other hand, the alternative current is mostly utilized in the transportation of energy generating industries. It was also more often used to power electric motors, which are devices that transport electrical energy into mechanical energy. We have the examples of refrigerators, dishwashers, trash, trash disposal, and anything that applies to that. Basically, almost every home on the planet is powered by AC, although DC is more often, more often utilized. Basically, both are required for proper operation of our household and appliances. It's just that, that one is a flow of electric charge in one direction or DC and the other one is the flow of electric charge that periodically reverses direction or what we call the AC. That's all. Thank you. We were given the task of defining and identifying the following questions for part 2 of activity number 3. Now, I'm going to discuss item number 6 and the question is, what kind of circuit is having a closed loop with an inductor and a capacitor? To answer the question, I'll begin with an idealized zero resistance circuit with an inductor and a capacitor, known as an LC circuit. An LC circuit, also known as a resonance circuit or tank circuit, is an electric circuit that consists of an inductor which represents the L and a capacitor which represents the C, connected together. The capacitor of the circuit begins to discharge when the switch is closed, causing a current to flow through the circuit. In turn, the current induces a magnetic field in the inductor. So for the last question, we have why is AC or alternating current more dangerous than DC or direct current? The dangers of alternating current or AC are five times greater than the dangers of direct current or DC. The major cause of this harmful effect to the human body is because of the alternating current's frequency. A cycle frequency of 60 cycles is highly dangerous. Even a tiny voltage of 25 volts can kill a person at this frequency. AC produces intense muscular contractions as well as perspirations. As a result, the skin resistance is reduced. It is critical to remove the victim from the current as soon as possible as prolonged contact with the current lowers skin resistance and breaks the life of the victim.